Hi, my name is Annabel Alarcon, High Speed Product Specialist at Expo. Today I'm going to guide you through our intelligent application iOptics, the best tool for transceiver validation. Now let's check out the equipment I will be using for this video. First, an FTV2 Pro, that is a Windows platform. Next, the, the module FTV X88200 NG, that is our 100 gig module. This one includes two ports, one QSFP and one CFP4. Also, we're going to be using a QSFP 28 CLR4, as you can see here, for the uh, green plastic strap. A CFP4, uh, a transceiver CFP4, and a fiber loop. Now, let's go to the GUI. The first step is to open Toolbox. Next, start the 88200NG module clicking on the Power Blazer icon. This may take a few seconds, so please wait until, until the initialization window finishes. Once the, the Power Blazer uh, window is open, look for in the Intelligent App folder and then you're going to see iOptics. After that, go to the menu at the top called Test Configurator to configure the test. As this is an intelligent application, the configuration steps are minimum. On the optical device under, under test area, select the port where your transceiver is inserted. The current selection is marked with an orange line. Make sure that the fiber loop is connected. If, if it is not connected, you're going to get a message like this. The link needs to be up for the test to run. The next step is to select the rate. The user can select the more, the more button to identify more information about the transceiver, like serial number or part number. In the test sequence area, the application displays information extracted from the transceiver on the following areas. Power consumption, optical TX and RX power ranges, maximum and minimum, also allows the user to select the, the following parameters, temperature threshold and stress test duration. And finally, the application also provides the skew and bare threshold expected for the specific transceiver. Once the test is configured, we can press the button start in the right side of the screen. When the test starts, the test result window appears. At the top of the screen, the different test phases that will validate the transceiver are displayed. At the bottom, we can see the power consumption and temperature measurements gathered directly from the transceivers. The transceiver go through five testing phases. The first phase, do a check on the MDIO I2C pins communication. The second phase, Test the TX power ranges that were gathered directly from the transceiver. The third phase tests the RX optical power limits that were gathered from the transceiver. And the fourth phase perform a stress test to the transceiver for the amount of time that was selected in the configuration phase. Finally, for high-speed transceivers, a skew test is performed and the maximum value is presented on the screen. Each of these tests provide individual, individually a graphical verdict associated with a green arrow. A verdict can also be provided on the power consumption and temperature monitoring considering the ranges provided by the transceiver or configured on the previous window. Okay, now let's check out uh, when there is an error. Again, it's displayed directly on the graphical uh, results page. We can see a cross directly on the face that failed. And also we can see the parameters that failed. So in this case, uh, we see that we have minus 13 uh, dBs from power and the X on the optical RX power test. And also, 
we can select on the upper uh, uh, button logger we could select that uh, uh, part of the window and we get all the detailed information regarding the errors that uh, failed in this case for example we had a loss on on one of the links so we can identify exactly the time the, the type of ev event and the duration And this uh, logger is also associated to any of the five uh, testing phases that we saw on the result page. When the test finishes, a complete report can be saved, including all the results from each phase and the details from the transceiver. To create it, answer yes to the question at the end of the test or select the report icon at the right hand of the screen. On the file name field, confirm that the name of the file is correct. Click on the button Save Report and select the format that you need to be saved. The report is generated with all the information included in the test.